Today, employment, what can you believe? Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to latest post covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. The seasonally adjusted unemployment rate fell to 4.9% in June 2021, according to the latest figures from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. So that means that June saw the eighth consecutive monthly fall in the unemployment rate. This was 0.4 percentage points below the March 2020 at 5.3% and the lowest that it's been since December 2010. The declining unemployment rate continues to coincide with employers reporting high levels of job vacancies and difficulties in finding suitable people for them, said the ABS. The number of unemployed people fell by 22,000 in June, down to 679,000. And that was around 325,000 people below the peak of 1 million unemployed people in July 2020. And the youth unemployment rate decreased by 0.5 percentage points to 10.2%, which was 1.4 percentage points below the rate at the start of the pandemic. The last time we saw a youth unemployment rate of 10.2% was in January 2009. The fall in the unemployment rate coincided with a further increase in employment. Employment increased by 29,000 people in June, which was below the average increase of 50,000 people we saw over the previous six months. Employment was 1.2% higher in June than at the start of the pandemic. However, while the unemployment rate dropped from 5.1% to 4.9% in June, the underemployment rate jumped half a percentage point to 7.9%. That jump in underemployment derived from a 1.8% decline in the hours worked last month, which means 33 million fewer hours were worked across the economy. That was mainly due to the impact of Victoria's most recent snap lockdown, which occurred during the survey period. Hours worked decreased nationally by 1.8% between May and June, with hours work falling by 8.4% in Victoria and increasing by 0.5% in the rest of Australia. Hours work data continues to provide the best indicator of the extent of labour market impacts from lockdowns. Hours worked in Victoria fell by 8.4% in June, compared with a 0.3% fall in employment. This highlights the extent to which people in Victoria had reduced hours or no work through the lockdowns, without necessarily losing their jobs. Victoria actually had the lowest unemployment rate at 4.4%, but the highest underemployment rate at 10.1%, while South Australia had the highest unemployment rate of 5.3%, while Tasmania had the lowest participation rate at 61.1%. Of course, the lockdowns in New South Wales and elsewhere, including now Victoria, will impact the jobs data in coming months. Gareth Aird, head of Australia Economics at the Commonwealth Bank, said the data showed the labour market had exceptionally strong momentum in recent months. However, he said things had now taken a dramatic turn in New South Wales, with the lockdown of Greater Sydney in recent weeks and with COVID now spreading again back to Victoria. He said the impact of the current lockdowns would be captured in the July and August labour force surveys. The lockdown of Greater Sydney has significantly increased the level of uncertainty over economic outcomes in the near term, he said. A lockdown of seven weeks in Greater Sydney could see a significant number of New South Wales workers stood down. Based on what happened over April and May last year, employment could fall by 200,000 and unemployment may increase by 50,000 in the coming months. But Dr Sarah Hunter, Chief Australia Economist for BIS Oxford Economics, said the June employment data showed the economic recovery had strong momentum before the New South Wales outbreak. But the impact of Victoria's lockdown in late May and early June was also clear in the data. The number of hours worked fell 1.8% as a result 
of the stay-at-home order, she said. For Victoria specifically, the two-week lockdown led to an 8.4% fall in hours worked between May and June. But pleasingly, employment in the state only declined by 0.3% month over month. This suggests that the majority of employers retained their workforce through the lockdown and were able to snap back and reopen when restrictions were eased. The participation rate, measuring people aged 15 and over, either in work or looking for it, remained stable at 66.2%. Marcel Thaliant, senior Australia and New Zealand economist at Carroll Economics, said the size of the labour force only increased by 7,000 people in June, with border closures restricting immigration. With the participation rate remaining steady, that helped the unemployment rate to decline to that 4.9% level, he said. With the border set to remain closed until at least the end of the year, labour force growth will remain muted, so even small employment gains will result in a further decline in the unemployment rate, he explained. The upshot is that wage growth should start to accelerate in earnest before long, prompting the Reserve Bank to tighten policy by early 2023, he said. Mr Eyre said fiscal policy's impact on the labour market in the last year showed what could be achieved with policy. It's amazing to think that in June 2021, Australia had its tightest labour market in a decade, a year after its first recession in three decades. He said it shows what can be achieved with expansionary fiscal settings and a reduction in labour market supply. The blueprint is there to achieve a very tight labour market once again, as the vaccinations are fully rolled out. Now, it's also worth remembering that the ABS figures are hiding 300,000 job losses that helped push down Australia's unemployment rate after the borders were closed, as temporary migrant worker jobs before the lockdown are being done by locals now. The former were not in the employment numbers, the latter are. And remember, if you work just one hour a week or more, that means you're employed. So this is still full of number wanging. The true picture is nowhere near the hype. But the real question is, will these conditions really lead to wages growth ahead? Well, I have my doubts. In the meantime, we should take these numbers with a very large pinch of salt. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching. And I'll see you again next time.